brought to you by Charity Mobile, the phone company that supports life and family. 5% of your monthly plan price goes to your favorite charity. Buy the way you believe at CharityMobile.com and use promo code TRADITION. Good news is exceedingly rare in the church these days. People often get kind of annoyed that when they watch channels like this, there's very little good news. But there is some, and it went under the radar, unless you read the news outlets that most people would find untrustworthy in the church. The National Catholic Reporter, Religion News, and a few of these other places. The places run by unapologetic modernists, people who want the church to change and essentially leave Catholicism behind for the new religion, whatever it is. There's some good news being reported out of there. They're not happy about it. Figures in the church on our side of things, like Michael Hitchborn and others who have quietly been working to wake the bishops up and get them to act against the Catholic campaign for human development, have had a victory, a small but significant victory. And the details of this story point to things being much worse for the misuse of funds donated by laity to the church than anybody ever thought, and that it looks like things might be in the process of correcting themselves simply because you have refused to take part in their mess anymore. You refuse to give them your money. Keep this going until the bishops are forced to change, and it looks like they are in the process of being forced to change the way things are going. So we go to the religionnews.com for this headline. Catholic Bishops Conference announces major layoffs to department focused on social justice. The department includes programs focused on international policy, environmental justice, uh, people having dislike for one another over their immutable characteristics, and domestic anti-poverty initiatives. I know it will come to the be as news for many of you that the bishops have such resources available that they focus on a whole host of secular issues like that. I'm not saying that on certain ones of those the church shouldn't have a say in things. I wrote my doctoral dissertation on Catholic social teaching. I actually believe the church should have strong opinions on economics, politics, sociology, and the rest as a witness against the trends of the world. And that's kind of where the problem is. Your funds and uh, government funds, because the church has often partnered, the bad habit of partnering with U.S. government agencies and others in Germany and other places to promote their initiatives, and they're given money from the government to do it which then twists the mission of the church and then the corporal works of mercy to fit their program, which has always been an ideological program at odds with Catholicism. And here in the United States, the, the CCHD, the Catholic Campaign for Human Development story, is like the prime example of this. Prime example of this. Catholics have started refusing to give money and has hurt the finances of the Catholic Campaign for Human Development to such a degree. We now get this story. Layoffs in all these very questionable departments at the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops. From the article, quote, Less than two weeks after many U.S. bishops made a strong show of support for the conference's domestic anti-poverty initiative, that's the Catholic Campaign for Human Development, which two weeks ago the bishops rejected Michael Hitchborn's attempt to have them end the Catholic Campaign for Human Development. They stood by it for some strange reason. That's what they mean here. Back to it. Staff members from that initiative and others were laid off on Monday, June 24th, as part of a restructuring of the wing of the conference that supports Catholic social teaching. Chieko Noguchi, the spokesperson for the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops, confirmed layoffs and a restructuring of the Department of Justice, Peace, and Human Development in a statement to Religion News Service. The reorganization will allow the conference to align resources most closely to, with recent funding trends, Noguchi wrote. The department includes programs focused on international policy, domestic policy, environmental justice, the R word, education and outreach, as well as the Catholic Campaign for Human Development, an office supervising grants to U.S. community organizations working on systemic solutions to poverty issues. The future of CCHD was a major topic of debate at the most recent bishops' meeting. However, the wider cuts to the Department of Justice, Peace, and Human Development came as a shock to many. Why in a world at war, a nation with pervasive poverty, are the leaders of the conference minimizing the conference's commitments to overcome poverty, work for justice, and pursue peace? Asked John Carr, former director of the department for more than 20 years, in an email to RNS, end quote. This is a victory for decency in the church. 
To the other side of the great church divide, that will sound illogical, but it's a victory for decency, even if a moderate, small victory. Your tithing dollars are often used to fund evil programs run by nonprofit organizations that are not Catholic or sometimes call themselves Catholic, but they operate in stark opposition to the church and her timeless teachings, especially on morality. Uh, there's some examples of this. Michael Hitchborn was tweeting about these recently, about uh, some of the bishops who are very appalled by this story we're talking about right now, are obviously likely to be appalled because they allow their radio stations to play literally satanic music in their, their diocesan radio stations to play satanic music on radio shows. So, of course, their moral compass is going to be kind of broken here. But this is a victory. Now, and much credit is due to Michael Hitchborn at Lepanto Institute and other similar organizations who've been trying to shine a light on this darkness here. So, but there is still a lot of work to be done. But this is a step in the right direction. But getting rid of the Catholic campaign for human development is of paramount importance here. But this has so angered and confused modernists that they don't know how to cope with this. Case in point. Headline from the National Catholic Reporter. Questions swirl as U.S. Bishops' Conference cripples justice office with layoffs. They've taken the concept of social justice and so distorted it, so contorted it, that they've used the concept invented by the Catholic Church. Yes, social justice as terminology and as a concept was in, developed by the Catholic Church in the 19th century to, and you will not believe this if you're not familiar with this, to defend the property rights of nobility in Italy and beyond against the pressures put on government by the followers of Karl Marx. Think the 1840s, if you're familiar with European history, 1848 to 1860 was a pretty rough time in Europe. That's when this concept was developed. I can make a whole video on the history of this, not that anybody would bother watching it. But the church's concept on social justice would be considered right-wing today. In our time, the concept has been so contorted that it bears little resemblance to the church's teaching on the matter, which is the point of what the activists in the church will want today. From the article, quote, The decision to cripple the Office of Justice, Peace, and Human Development at the U.S. Bishops' Conference by cutting its staff in half raises profound questions of governance and mission for the bishops. The fact that this move comes two weeks after the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops held its spring meeting at which no one mentioned such a drastic restructuring of the conference adds issues of trust and integrity to the issues of governance and mission. The questions are not vague. Was the attack on the Catholic campaign for human development leaked to the pillar, a head fake to conceal this larger design? The statement from U.S. Bishops Conference spokesman Chieko Noguchi said, quote, The reorganization will allow the conference to align resources more closely with recent funding trends. What are those funding trends and how do they relate specifically to the offices that have been slashed? Is it time for there to be an outside audit of the Bishops' Conference finances? <laughs> End quote. Yeah, that's the National Catholic Reporter threatening the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops if they don't fall into ideological line with the demands of the modernists. After all, who is going to be an external source that could audit their funding? Who? Who would it be? Can you name somebody who has the authority and the right to do that? I'm waiting. I'm legitimately curious who they have in mind for this. We get another example from the National Catholic Reporter. Headline, Bishops' Conference layoffs spark wave of concern and speculation. This has to do with layoffs at the Catholic Campaign for Human Development itself. Now, why would they be laying people off? Because you, the normal Catholic who just wants the faith as has always been taught and to worship the way our ancestors always worshipped, in a way that was recognized to be Catholic to any Catholic who lived before the 20th century, people like you and I are not donating to the Catholic Campaign for Human Development anymore and are refusing to do so in increasing numbers. This has been a problem brewing for years in the Catholic Campaign for Human Development, as it turns out, because we want our money to be used, our donations to be used, and the treasures of the faith to be used in a way that conforms with the teachings of the Church. That's it. It's not exactly a hard problem here. If the Catholic Campaign for Human Development was opening food pantries and uh, maybe centers for the for for homeless population to get a shower and a shave and to a hot meal and shelters for them and all these other normal sounding things, nobody would be complaining about them. They wouldn't be. But that's not what it's used for here. Again, Lepanto Institute is a lot of reports on the evils that, are, that they fund with this. Here's what they say. Quote, Sources close to American Catholic social justice organizations, that's vague, 
told the National Catholic Reporter that the number of laid-off staffers could be as high as 12, about half of the entire department. The U.S. Bishops' Conference did not respond to questions regarding how many and which staffers have been laid off, and whether their roles will be replaced in the foreseeable future. The National Catholic Reporter also tried to contact some of the staffers in the Department of Justice, Peace, and Human Development office directly, but they responded they were not authorized to provide any information on the matter. Tyson pointed out that questions have persisted over the years regarding the transparency and accuracy of financial reporting, particularly in relation to the Catholic Campaign for Human Development. Tyson suggested that, quote, a 10-year longitudinal study could provide, quote, valuable insights, allowing for a detailed frame-by-frame analysis of what transpired and why the bishop's subcommittee remained unaware of certain financial issues. I've just finished my 19th year as a bishop, and over these many years, there have been questions about the quality of financial information shared within the conference and publicly, he said. End quote. In other words... There hasn't been any transparency with the financing of the Catholic Campaign for Human Development. What do you think about that? This has been a problem for a long time, but it, I'm not surprised. The entire life of this YouTube channel, every time the Catholic Campaign for Human Development collection comes around, I, just like my peers, will get on here and tell you that how bad the organization is and you should not give money to it. So this has been a problem for them for a long time. And it's not just YouTubers. This has been going on for a long time. The Lapanto Institute's been doing good work on this, as have others. There has been a concerted push in the United States by Catholics to end this program. And there has been some positive movement on it. Curious, though, what you have to say about this, so let me know in the comments, please. You like and subscribe if you haven't. It does help. So does sharing this on social media. That helps, too. And if you've ever thought about supporting the work of Return to Tradition through the Join button below or Patreon or Subscribestar, you your help does help keep these messages coming daily, and it is greatly appreciated. As always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.